Um, as leaders of NBA franchises, each of you have made the decision to publicly address injustice. Um, Vivek, uh, with Stephon Clark, it, it was a situation where the Kings were quick in, in showing the world what their side was and uh, stepping toward the family and stepping toward the pain of the city. Um, can you take me through just when you first heard about Stephon Clark? Obviously, there was uh, some peaceful protests outside the arena. Uh, just what the Kings went through in order to uh, handle the situation as they saw just. Sure, and uh, welcome, uh, welcome to Sacramento. Uh, I guess I, I'm the only one whose name is in Mark, so <laughs> welcome to all the Marks, uh, and thank you for participating in this, Mark. Yes, sir. Uh, so it was about a year ago, and we had a, a tragic, tragic event take place uh, in our city, uh, and uh, we were playing the Hawks uh, one night, and I was uh, sitting in the owner's room with uh, Tony Ressler, the Hawks owner, and with uh, uh, Dean Ch uh, Gary May with the Chancellor of UC Davis. And my folks pulled me out of the room and said that uh, we have protests. And we had a few thousand uh, fans in the arena, and then we had a wall of protesters, uh, and then fans beyond that. Uh, and so it was a very fast-moving uh, situation. Uh, the NBA still wanted us to play the game. Uh, a couple of our players, and we had some highly respected veterans, uh, like Garrett Temple and uh, Vince Carter. Uh, and they said they obviously felt sympathetic to the protesters. A young man had died and couldn't just be business as usual. Uh, but they said they would play the game if after the game I stood up and said a few words uh, and they would join me. Uh, so uh, I tried to actually go out and, and speak to the protesters, but they said that uh, I wasn't going to be able to do that. Uh, so I summoned them to come in and uh, one of the uh, leaders, uh, Barry Asius, who's going to speak today, uh, joined me and I welcomed him, sat him down, uh, and we started this dialogue. So after the game, I just stood up and said a few words. I spoke from the heart uh, and uh, really uh, shared uh, you know, a message of, uh, of, of sympathy and, and unity and healing, and I made a commitment that uh, we would work hard uh, to have an impact and and do better and bring people together and help create opportunity. Uh, so a week later, we formed a partnership with uh, Bill Black, uh, and that's a multi-year uh, partnership, and we're very, very pleased at the progress that we've made. We've had STEM workshops, we've had uh, clinics, uh, we have a youth league, uh, and we've had 100% uh, participation in these events. Now, uh, a couple of summers ago, I, I got to know Mark's family. His son was in uh, Israel with me, and what struck me was just the shared values that the Bucks family had uh, to the King's family, uh, really you know, focusing on doing good and social justice. Uh, and they had a tragedy in their community uh, where uh, one of their players was uh, unfairly treated. Uh, and uh, so you know, it turned out this is Black History Month. Uh, we were playing the Bucks, uh, and we asked if uh, we could jointly do something. Uh, and they right away uh, said yes, and so here we are to team up for change. Quickly, um, what made you comfortable speaking so quickly on on uh, the issue on Stephon Clark? And you did you just come up with the speech that you told the fans on the top of your head? Like it was certainly seemed heartfelt. Yeah, I just took the mic and I spoke from the heart. And uh, you know, I, I, I'm a parent, and you know, uh, the family had lost a young man. It was it was tragic, uh, and there were two young kids orphaned from that. Um, and I come from a family where, uh, you know, we respect people's right to protest and uh, social justice. And so, you know, I've always felt that this is bigger than basketball. When I bought the Kings, we laid out a mission statement for the Kings, and the mission was that we wanted to build a winning franchise that enhances the lives of those it touches and makes the world a better place. So here was an opportunity to actually practice that, and so I just picked up the mic and spoke from the heart. Uh, Mr. Lazary, with the situation with Sterling Brown, it happened about 2 a.m. at that Walmart. When did you find out? How did you get the information, disseminate it, and then also 
decide to back Mr. Brown? It, it was a quick amount of time, but can you talk about that whole process and how you got the news? Sure. Um, found out that morning um, when I woke up, mainly um, had a number of emails from Peter Fagan, um, who's our president, um, as to what had happened. Um, as we were trying to get information, um, you know, I think for me, I was a bit surprised. Just um, I knew Sterling, and um, it didn't sound like him. I mean, he's, um, you know, one of the things I think Vivek does, I try to do, is you try to get to know your players um, just as people. And um, Sterling, in my opinion, was just a great kid. And it didn't make sense. It didn't sound like him. And I think um, as we got more information, and, you know, we were on the phone um, with Peter, and as we got more and more information, um, you sort of came to a crossroads, which is, um, you know, there's, one, there's Sterling's side and there's the other side. And I think for us as an organization, um, we ended up uh, coming down on Sterling's side uh, simply because we knew him as a person and um, we just felt, you know, nobody really knew all the facts until the video came out. Um, but, um, you know, we wanted to back him and, um, and we wanted to have the full weight of the organization behind him. Uh, Mr. Thompson, um can you talk about that morning when everything happened? And, and were you surprised that the Bucks backed Sterling so quickly? And, and what did that mean to you? You know, I think um, what the Bucks have done with respect to Sterling Brown is significant. What is happening here today is significant. When you have two primary institutions saying they're going to back the players, it really sends a message on the street. And why do I think it's so important? Let me, you know, I think to understand this, we just need to talk about what happened to Sterling a little bit. Uh, this is something that would have never happened to my son. You know, he is a young man. He's on a date. It's 2 in the morning. The, the parking lot is empty. It's winter time. His date's in the car. He pulls up. He put parks in handicap parking. Many, many people have done this. He should have got a ticket. He runs, he runs in. He comes out. And there is an officer there, a white officer, who says, you know, what are you doing? Who are you? He says, you know, what's, what's going on? You know, give me a ticket. He pushes him. The officer pushes Sterling. He hadn't done anything. He's sitting there. He, now he is escalating the situation. He calls for help. Three minutes later, seven other officers come. They surround him. In the interim, he's implying that he's trying to hide something. The sergeant gets there. The sergeant says, Sterling says, what's going on? I haven't done anything. Give me a ticket. He says, you know, you can't do this. You can't talk to me like that. You should be in handcuffs. Now, this is what the sergeant has said. He said, you should be on handcuffs. And Sterling hasn't done anything. They proceed to circle him. They take him down. An officer has a gun out, not a taser, a gun, as he goes down. I mean, it was so close to a Stephon Clark incident. And this is the city you heard a little bit about it. Milwaukee is known, and we're in the, trying to make it a better place. But it is one of the most segregated places. The, a recent study last fall came out. Unarmed black man gets shot by police 16 to 1 to white unarmed people. So this is, Sterling is being taken down. They hit him, in the, knee him in the groin. They tase him. They're on him. They handcuff him. Six minutes, he's prone. Then they sit him up. They finally, somebody there figures out. They go, oh, this is Sterling Brown. Are you a Bucks player? And the attitude changes. Well, we hope the Bucks win the playoff. 
Then they let him up. Now, but he has been on the ground in the cold, completely humiliated and injured and beat up for 17 minutes until that happens. Then, you know, they search his car. They take him. How they arrest him? He is a young kid. He is really, really an amazing young. He didn't say anything. He went to practice and he played. He didn't say anything until the the video came out. When the video came out, he said, I'm going to hire a lawyer and I'm going to sue the city because this should not happen to me. But if it's happening to me, it's happening to many young African-American men. And that cannot be tolerated in this new America. He said, he said, I'm going to speak for the, I'll be the voice for the voiceless. And I'm here for Dontre Hamilton, who was a young African-American man, mentally ill, shot by the police in Milwaukee. I'm here for Stephon Clark. So when Sterling says that, and he's a, a person from the street level with immense influence, that cares and says, we must have accountability, right? They have to say this was unconstitutional. This was a race-based attack. You know, when the officer sits there and says, I own this place. And he says, what do these people do? What is that? That implies it. And you do that in front of your date? What does that say? That is the classic racist attack on the black man. Completely. And he said, they must be accountable. They must admit. The answer, the legal answer, despite an apology by the chief, despite an apology by the mayor, the answer legally said, this incident was Mr. Brown's fault. Can you believe it? So that lawsuit, the city has to change. And this gets to when the when Sterling speaks up and then... When the Bucks, the same day that Sterling issued his statement, say this is an abuse of power, this is unacceptable, we have to have high standards, and we are going to stand by Sterling Brown and the, the community in Milwaukee until City Hall cleans this up, sends a message, you know, that every, it, me, it means everything. To a young black person of color. It says you matter. And every movement, and this is a movement around this, the country, needs people like these two that will take their resources and use it for events like today that can make a real difference. Thank you. Thank you. Con- Kind of going off of what you just said, I, I think a lot of people don't know the background of these two men, which perhaps led to uh, the, them having strength to do what they did. Um, Mr. Ranadive, from India, came to the United States with $50 in his pocket and school paid for at MIT when he was 17 years old. But he comes from a history of uh, social activists. I want to see if you could, you know, talk about uh, your family and and what they taught you that you brought to America. Uh, Yeah, sure. I was always taught that it's, you have to live a life that's bigger than yourself. Uh, When I was a little boy uh, growing up in Bombay, um, I woke up uh, one day and uh, I saw a picture in the Times of India, uh, which is the big newspaper there, And on the front page, the cover picture showed my father sitting on a little stool in a jail cell. And so what happened is that uh, he was running an airline. He had found a plane that they made unsafe, and he had spoken out, uh, even though the plane was made by the Indian government. Uh, So the prime minister passed a law uh, called the Maintenance of Internal Security Act, uh, and he became the first person that she put in jail under the law. So when you see your father sitting uh, behind the jail cell, it's, a, it's, it's an image that's etched into my soul. Uh, so for me, 
coming to this country and seeing uh, how there was freedom of speech uh, and people have the right to protest peacefully uh, has always been a core value. So when uh, we had protesters come, uh, you know, I was sympathetic to their message and they were doing it in a peaceful fashion. Uh, so not just did I uh, appreciate what they were doing, but I actually welcomed them to come in uh, and sit with me, watch the game, and, and share their thoughts. Uh, I also just wanted to give a shout out to the league that we're in, the NBA. You know, we're blessed with great leadership. Uh, it was David Stern, now it's Adam Silver, we have Amy Brooks here. Uh, they've never been afraid uh, to step out there uh, and give voice to the voiceless and take a stand uh, for what's right and what's just. Uh, so I wanted to thank uh, the commissioner and, and the entire NBA and also the players. You know, we have players who they might be young, but uh, they're very knowledgeable, they're very engaged, uh, and they're very willing uh, to, to walk the talk. Um, Sterling Brown is probably a shoot-around right now. Otherwise, I wish he could be up here with us. Harrison Barnes, after the game tonight, uh, new Kings forward. He uh, met with him last night. He wished he could be here, but he has a game as well. So uh, he's going to speak to the youth after the game tonight, and I know that's going to be great. Um, as far as Mr. Lazary, you, you're from Morocco. You, your family also dealt with some racism that led you to come to America. And we'll see if you could talk about that. Sure. Um, I can get Sterling if you want. I mean, I can just go out there and go yeah, Sterling. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the less he practices, the better it will be. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, can you get that Greek guy as just well? Just get the Greek guy. <laughs> get the Greek. Just get everybody. Just just, get everybody. Get everybody come in. Yeah. Uh, no, it's. Um, you know, I was born in Morocco, and, um, you know, it's uh, uh, Morocco at the time, um, there was about 100,000 Jews. Uh, today in Morocco, there's about 500. Um, and so one of the reasons we left was after the Six-Day War. Um, Morocco was not one of the greatest places to be if you were Jewish. So we came to the United States, um, you know, saying... Vivek and I have sort of the same background. I mean, I, I came here, grew up in Hartford. You live with your um, two sisters in one room, so all you want to do is go to college uh, <laughs> and get the hell out. Uh, so it's, um, you know, I, I think for me, um, I'm just a big believer that um, one person can make a change. That's really it, you know. I, you know, the, the real question always ends up being, does history make the man or does the man make history? And I'm a big believer that man makes history, right? And I think, you know, a lot of what you've got to do and sort of the hard thing to always do is to stand up and for people to listen to those voices, right? And I think what Vivek did and, you know, when he went out and started talking to everybody because of what happened here, and I think what... You know, for what we did, a lot of it was just our belief in Sterling, right? And belief in his voice has to be heard. Um, but part of that is you believe in the individual, right? And the problem at times that we all have is sometimes people don't want you to be heard. And I think it's our job as an organization and just as people to try to make sure that people's um, voice is heard so that you can make a difference because the only way you're going to have change is if people are able to listen to it. So I wish it was more complicated, but it's not. I'm sure, uh, Mr. Thompson, a lot of people are wondering what's the latest with Sterling and, and, and where do you guys go from here? You know, the, the thing about uh, federal lawsuits are we've asked for many, many documents from the city. Part of our claim on behalf of Sterling is that the city over the years has failed to address race as a factor in these kinds of incidents. And to date, I've gotten two pieces of paper in terms of race-based discipline. And, you know, part of developing trust with the police and the community is that you have to have proper training. And we have suggested that the, the Milwaukee use the videos of this Sterling incident as training. Certainly that would be something that would be very, very crucial for we have asked them to identify the, the key 
people on issues of training and discipline. And as a lawyer, I get to ask them under oath now what they're doing. And we have the depositions of all the key defendants coming up in March and in April. So we will have now under oath their version of events. We do know one of the, Mr. Andretti has been fired, and he was fired for the tweets the, that, you know, the Facebook posts that were completely racist in nature and mocked the Bucks, mocked, you know, Kevin Durant. I mean, it was, they fired him on the basis that that racism was so blatant that he wouldn't be able to testify as a police officer in future cases. The officers that conducted and tased and essentially involved in the attack, they're still there. So we are hopeful, but it's, we don't have the ability in a lawsuit to make people fire people. The job that Sterling Brown has asked is to pursue justice, which means the city has to admit, legally in court, that this was a racist attack. And I, you can't heal until there is accountability. You can't move on and forgive until it is straight. And as long as the city takes a position that it was Mr. Brown's conduct that resulted in this, we're, we're at that crossroads. This lawsuit, like our country, like this city, like Milwaukee, is at a crossroads. We have the ability to decide, and this is what Mark says, we have the ability to decide we want to do the right thing, even though we may not be winning now. We will win in the end. Steal Spike Lee, right? Do the right thing. For Vivek and Mark Lazary, um, what has been the response? You talked about the NBA a little bit, but also, you don't have to mention names. We're, we're, we're amongst family, right? Um, fellow owners, anybody say anything to you, whether it's owners in, in the NBA or from other sports, where was it all support or were, were some people like, what are you guys doing? Or You know, what, what has been the response through the NBA, other teams, other leagues, just that you've gotten through both of your situations? Yes, my personal experience has been that we've been uh, showered with love and support, uh, not just from the NBA, but from other sports uh, teams as well in other sports. Uh, so it's been just an overwhelmingly positive and, and loving message. And um, you know, shortly after this happened, we were playing the Celtics and uh, we did a public service announcement that was a joint message between our players and their players, uh, and they wholeheartedly participated in it. Uh, so my own experience has been that uh, that the beauty the beauty of sports, the beauty of basketball is that it doesn't really matter uh, what your ethnic origin, what your religion, what the color of your skin is. We only have one question: Do you have game? <laughs> If you got game, come to my team. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's kind of the philosophy. And so, I, you know, I've just been showered with love and support. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I, I think the NBA as a community um, has been exceptionally supportive. I think the owners, um, you know, from top down um, has been, hey, love what you did. How can we help? It, it, Regarding the NFL or any of the other, I don't know anybody. I mean, I wish um, I don't know any of the owners there. Um, so I think within our community, it's been, hey, let me know what you need. And I think from the players, it's even more. So um, I think it's been all positive. What, what is, um, for both of you, how do you go forward? Let's start with you, Mark, first. I guess, with, with Sterling's situation, how do you guys go forward from now, and how do you – how do you help Sterling even as it continues to go into to the courts? Look, I think a lot of it is getting your message out. But then it's starting, you know, we started some mentoring programs in Milwaukee. You want people to talk. You want people to understand what's going on. Um, the more people have a discussion about it, 
and the more people feel like I understand or I'm trying to understand what's going on, I think the better it ends up being. I think for us, really, it's a lot of it is sterling. It's, it's having him speak out, having him talk about it, um, so that people, you know, don't do, don't make the same mistake, don't do um, what isn't right, what isn't right. So a lot of this is just, you know, look, everybody who's here now, there, there's more people who are understanding what's going on. And the more of that that is happening, the better it is. Um, the fact that you have press here um, that's talking about this is beneficial. The more people understand what happens and the more people see what the difference between right and wrong is, um, I think that's beneficial. So that's what we're trying to do. And, and so the, the anniversary of uh, Stephon Clark's passing is coming soon. Um, how do the Kings move forward? Is there anything planned uh, in the coming weeks? Yeah, so, what, so Mark, within a week of the incident where I spoke on Center Court, we announced a uh, formal multi-year partnership with uh, Bill Black, which is this incredible uh, coalition of uh, local leaders. Uh, and we have a multi-year program. Uh, so we've uh, conducted STEM workshops and skills uh, camps, and we even have a youth uh, basketball league, uh, Kings and Queens Rise. Uh, so from our perspective, uh, this is a ongoing process. And really what uh, I'm committed to is I want every single kid in our community uh, to have opportunity, to have a voice, uh, to have a future. Uh, and to really have a on-ramp onto the digital future. Uh, so we're very uh, pleased with the support that we've received, uh, the participation levels, uh, and it's going to be something that we do on an ongoing basis, and this event is, is one example that encourages dialogue, and you know, we can exchange ideas and best practices, uh, and we're excited that, uh, Mark, you've invited us uh, to your city uh, where we will do this uh, next year. So this is a work in progress. So you're announcing something right now? Next oh, I, year? I think, no, I think we are doing yeah, it. We're, we're going to do it. Mark, you're going to have to get me a nice jacket because I heard it's really <laughs> cold there. <laughs> we'll try to do it in the dead of winter <laughs> so people really get to know Milwaukee. Yeah. Uh, um, what made you want to come to this? Um, one, um, really two big reasons. Um, first is Vivek. Um, I have a huge amount of respect for him and the organization and what they're doing. Um, second is supporting Sterling. I mean, at the end of the day, um, if I'm supporting Sterling, maybe others will support him, right? If, if Vivek is behind something, maybe others will do that. Um, it really is. It's just, it, it's just adding more voices that are out there, and then more people will focus on it. You know, like I thought... Um, I thought it was fabulous if, if I remember her name correctly, Miss Price, the woman who spoke, the poet. Mm -hmm. I, I'd never heard anything like that. I thought she was great. I'd love to have her come to Milwaukee when we're doing this. I mean, it's, <clears throat> but, you know, for me, it was, I'm looking going, wow, <laughs> she's fabulous. So more people need to hear, hear her, right? It's just, I think as you have more and more of that, it's all, it's all positive. How's Sterling holding up? And, and, and Mark, maybe you can jump in there as well. How, how's he doing? You know, Bring him out. And, and also, what, what have you guys kind of dealt with that has been painful behind the scenes? Whether it's emails, calls. I know he's gotten some, some things. The... Um you know, there's this funny thing, attorney-client privilege, so some things are, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. But I can say this. You know, Sterling is an amazing young person. Uh, you know, the, the level of dedication to the game, as you say, that it takes to play at this level is phenomenal. And he has essentially said, I am going to be the best basketball player I can be. And uh, in conjunction with his agent in the Bucks, he has t decided when he wanted to speak publicly to make the point. Uh, he and his uh, brother Shannon, you know, they've set up a foundation now. He's had a couple of events in his hometown. Part of his goal out of, with the federal lawsuit is to fund the foundation so he can contribute dollars and cents on the street with kids.
to make a difference. And to me, it's that, that team approach that amazes me about, about him. I mean, he is just, you know, a phenomenal uh, team player. And he has just said, look, the city has to get this straight. You know, I mean, any, anybody that's watched the videos knows that this was an unconstitutional stop. And, you know, this is, as I said at the beginning, this would not have happened to my son. You know, my son might not have even got a ticket. He certainly wouldn't have spent time in jail and treated this way and humiliated this way. And my son would have never been laying there on the ground afraid that he was going to die. Right? I mean, this is a real thing for white people that they don't get it. When you're not white and you're in police custody, you are afraid you may not get off the ground. So I think he's doing great. And I like the minutes he's getting. And, uh, you know, I can't wait till his jersey's out there because, you know, my grandkid wants one. So me too. Um, winding up here, I'm going to give you the last words. Um, what do you hope that everybody gets from today? And uh, what, what does this event mean to you? Yeah, so first of all, you know, a, a big thank you to the Bucks for uh, uh, being a part of this. Uh, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we have to take actions, uh, and actions uh, speak louder than words. Uh, so if we can do things that uh, impact uh to folks in our community, uh, then that means more than, than all the words. Uh, now, the dialogue is important, so I think this is terrific uh, that we're able to get together and, and talk and share the message and, and spread the love and uh, really uh, highlight some of the issues that uh, communities face. Uh, but I'm just very proud of uh, uh, the work that's being done in this city by the leaders uh, to bring those opportunities uh, uh, to the uh, community. Uh, my hope is that uh, this uh, concept goes viral and every, uh, not just basketball team, but every sports team picks it up. We have a unique uh, position as uh, sports team owners. Uh, to own a team is a huge honor. It's a huge privilege. There's only 30 NBA teams. Uh, but with that privilege comes responsibility. Yeah. Uh, we touch people in ways that nobody else can touch them. So if you own a business, you own a bank, or you own a, uh, you have an airline, you have customers. But when you have a sports team, you have a basketball team, you have fans. Yeah. And fans are engaged. Uh, you have a social network that you can reach out to. Uh, so if we can use that platform uh, to do good, and enhance the lives of those we touch. Uh, and if that goes viral, uh, then I think Mark and I have done something good. It's a small step, uh, but it's a step in the right direction. Everybody, please give a round of applause to Mark Thompson, Mark Lasby, and Vivek Ranadive. Thank you.